Do you want to do this in Warzone? <laughs> Not that, this. So over the past few seasons, I've been getting more and more dead slides and my hit reg feels terrible. Some of this is because of Call of Duty's dog ball servers, but something just didn't seem right on my end. So I did a little investigation and found a few settings that made a world of difference. Before we get to the main two, let's get all the easy Whoa. ones out of the way. I'm not sure what settings are available on console, but here are the ones I use on PC. All right, so obviously under controller, here we go. We got the, uh, let's we'll start with the dead zones. Uh, left stick max 65, right stick max 99, right stick min, either 0 or 1. Uh, not much of a difference. It'll take away a little bit of a stick drift, but not too much of a difference. Uh, left trigger, right trigger, I have on 3. Now for aiming, I'm playing on tw between 11 11 and 13 13. Right now I'm on 12 12 with 0 0.9. Uh, don't touch any of this. Tax sense, I just have it 1. Dynamic response curve, we'll come back to that in just a minute. Uh, instant ADS sensitivity transition timing. Target aim assist obviously on, default aim assist, don't do the black ops or any of that garbage. It's been debunked like a hundred times. Uh, motion sensor off. Over here we got automatic tax sprint. This one is still kind of debatable. Um, I don't think it makes a huge difference and I don't know. This one's like this one you might want to play with. Uh, the rest of it off, single tap sprint, off, 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 slide only, free, off, on, movement based, gas mask activation manual. Uh, aim down sight hold. I have that on sprint hold ADS melee instant ADS down on toggle prioritize interact. You want that one on this prioritize interact apply all off directional buttons for the backpack control because the stick can kind of mess you up sometimes if you do it on stick off uh, groups. I got that on press. I got akimbo on independent short delay free look melee and then just dumb stuff down here. Um, let's look into the graphics real quick as well. Uh, you might something that kind of piques your interest. Uh, full screen exclusive is important. Uh, make sure it's matching your refresh rate. I play on 2560 by 1440. Uh, V-Sync's off. I got unlimited. Optimal. Ba, ba, ba. That matters. I have my own fidelity cast about 70. Uh, all this is normal. I might raise them up actually a little bit. Uh, because I have, I usually get like 300 something frames, so I'm kind of wasting some. Uh, view, I play on 113. The lower this is, the stronger the aim assist is. The higher it is, the lower it is, the lower the aim assist, but you can see more. So I wouldn't go, I'd stay around like 110, 115. I wouldn't go too much higher or lower. Uh, all this on lease, that'll mess you up. Motion blur, you want off. Uh, this, I, I feel like it fades away faster when it's black instead of the white. I'm sorry, reverse that. It fades away faster when it's the white instead of the black, so that's the only reason I have that. But if that bothers you, you can change it to on, and that'll turn it, like, black instead of blinding you. All right, so for the two settings that made the biggest difference, we're going to go back to the dynamic aim response curve. So they added this little drop-down to actually adjust how strong this setting is. Uh, by default, it's all the way at 1, and that is the strongest. So... You want to back this down, um, depending on your sense, to about, uh, mine's about 0.25, excuse me. Um, and the higher it is, the lower your main sense would be. So you can kind of play with this and fine tune it. Um, I would definitely drop it down to about 0.25 or 0.5 and try that out. And see how you guys like it. And then lastly, we're going to talk about overclocking your controller. Okay, I had mine actually overclocked incorrectly for the longest time clocking your controller you're going to download this program called hid hid use uh i think it stands for like hide usb f or something like that so you're going to go when you download it go into this folder you're going to go up to driver and then you're going to hit setup okay uh you're going to go to all and even if you've done this already i want you to pay attention to this part here so the PS5 DualSense Edge controller. It's going to give you an option up to 8,000. Do not do this. I've, I've been playing on 8,000 for probably the whole time I've been on controller, and it's been messing me up. And here's the reason why. So this is actually the pull rate, and what that means is how fast 
the controller speaks to the computer and updates the position. So 8,000 is 8,000 times a second. Now what it's doing is it's just backlogging the data and sending the same position eight times. It's not actually updating the position. The max this controller can do is 1,000. So you want to be at 1,000 or even maybe 500. You're not going to tell that much big of a difference, but 8,000 will mess you up. So whenever you, you know, whenever you enter an input or hit a button or whatever, the computer actually gets confused and it actually messes with your frame rates as well. So this is very important for overclocking your controller on PC. Make sure this is set at a thousand. All right, catch you boys in the next one. God bless.